to the Prophecy Club. Maurice Scalar just had the most awesome dream and vision I think he has ever had, and one of the most powerful that we have ever read on the radio. Now, in yesterday's broadcast, I discussed this with Maurice, and he read and explained his dream. Then we went on talking for another hour or so, and I've edited that down, and I'm going to play the last part of that here in just a moment. But I'm going to back up and replay about the first 10 minutes of him explaining that vision. Then we're going to continue talking about it. It was a terribly frightening dream. In it, I saw a huge angel standing suspended in the air over New York Harbor. It looked so large that it covered the night sky. His body was clad in golden armor, as if he was going to war. His face and entire being were so bright that I could not gaze at him for long. White beams of light seemed to radiate outward from him in all directions. He was standing over the Statue of Liberty. It was night, but I could hardly see the lights around him coming from New York City as he blazed so brightly with divine light. He reached for his belt that was covered with a red sash around his midsection and drew out his sword. It was so massive. It blazed with light and fire all around it. It looked at least a hundred feet long. I have never felt such fear when I saw an angel before. I knew this mighty warring spirit had authority from the very throne of God. He had a grim expression as he held his, this mighty sword over his head with both hands. I could see that he was poised to hit the Statue of Liberty and cleave it in two. I trembled and tried to hide, but the angel was looking directly at me, and I knew there was nowhere to go that he would not see me. Then he spoke. His voice was like thunder and echoed throughout the whole harbor. He said, How long will you refuse to humble yourself, O America? You have been weighed in the balances of God and found wanting. Your beginning was great and noble, but your end shall be disgrace and destruction. Thus saith the Lord of heaven's armies, the Lord of hosts, Time is running out. The bowls of my wrath are full of my fury and judgment. They shall be poured out upon you. You shall drink them down to the dregs every drop. I have come to you day and night, pleading with you to return to me for over one hundred years. I am merciful and long-suffering. It brings me no joy to judge you. But you have hardened your hearts, scoffed at my warnings through my prophets and my holy servants. I brought you from nothing and exalted you, O America, higher than any other nation. But now you have fallen lower than Sodom. You have sinned greater than Egypt. You have become prouder than Babylon and Persia. You have become more selfish than Rome. You have exalted yourself in your own wisdom higher than Greece. You have more idols and high places of idolatry and luxury than any Gentile kingdom in history. Your beginning was pure and great, but now the stench of your sin and filth fills my nostrils. I shall cut you in pieces, and you shall reap the harvests of wrath from what you have sown. You shall no longer be the queen of nations. Now you shall bear your shame and become the lowest of the heathen nations. Now as Agag, you shall be hacked in pieces. O earth, 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 hear ye the word of the Lord. Then to my horror, that massive sword came smashing down on Lady Liberty. And when it hit the top of her head, there was a blinding flash of light, and that sword split her in two right down the middle. Then the sword came again and again against her. It divided her in pieces. As the sword would finish each strike, fires would burst forth. I heard terrible explosions. The vision of the statue ended with an earthquake as it was hacked into pieces and sunk into the harbor. I was weeping and crying out to God for mercy. Never had I seen this side of God before. I had only really known the love and goodness of him. Never had I, had I seen the wrath of the Almighty. Then, as if I was watching from a zoomed-in close-up, the dream shifted, and I started to zoom outward from New York Harbor and started traveling in the air over America. What I saw was horror beyond anything I have ever seen. I saw the United States seem to crack in two with a giant earthquake right down the middle. I saw the southeastern United States covered with a giant wave of water from the ocean. I saw a massive earthquake 
that seemed to crack off the coast of California. It reminded me of a saltine cracker that just cracked in two. The great cities along the west coast just fell into the ocean all the way from Mexico up to Alaska and giant waves flooded inland until much of the west coast just wasn't there. It, it, it had disappeared into to the Pacific Ocean. And then I saw three giant rocket missiles that took off into the air. Two came from out of the ocean waters and one came from land and traveled a great distance. All of them blew up in the air, one, two, and three in the upper atmosphere within five minutes of each other. And it was out near space. There were terrible nuclear bombs, but the last one was the biggest, and it created a huge mushroom cloud over the Midwest part of America. Then the ground shook and everything just went black. <laughs> there wasn't any electric light coming out of any homes. Then candles began to be lit in fires, and a little light was seen. There were other nuclear explosions, and people perished throughout the nation. There was just twisted metal and charred debris in cities that once were tall and majestic. There was widespread looting, and gangs roamed about everywhere with guns, stealing whatever food and supplies they could find. Then I saw what looked like elite pol riot police by the thousands go into communities and even cities, force the people out of their homes, and brought into what looked like concentration camps. Some, but not all, of these, quote, police armies had light blue helmets on. Hundreds of thousands of people were arrested in this way. Many would not, quote, cooperate, but were just shot and left dead in their homes. But there were millions of hidden groups that escaped the first wave of these terrible disasters. Revival broke out, and great evangelists and prophets and apostles rose up and began to preach to thousands outdoors, and many were saved and were born again. Miracles of provision, multiplication of food and water, and astonishing healings occurred. Millions of people cried out to God, and he heard and answered. I knew that this was not just happening in America, but the great tribulation was upon them. And all over the world, these calamities were also taking place. I saw multitudes of saints refusing to renounce Jesus as Lord. They were starving, many of them, but still refused to take the stamp on, on their bodies so that they could eat and live. There was what looked like kiosks that were in every little town. They advertised food and water only if you went inside them and took the electronic mark. Some went in, bowed down to a holographic movie image and images of the Antichrist, and, oh, they were, they were awful, but very realistic, and were branded in their hands and foreheads with an electronic tattoo-like stamp. When they came out, if they came out, they had a zombie-like look. Their minds and souls were gone. It looked like they had had a spiritual lobotomy. Then these immediately joined the armies of these police units and were given weapons after they were fed and drank and rested in the kiosk. They were like robots doing the Antichrist's bidding from then on. I knew that they were lost forever, but quite a few did not make it out. They were tortured mentally and physically inside that kiosk thing, but if they still refused the mark of the beast, there was a laser that shot through their brain and heart and sliced their heads off. Then they were immediately incinerated. Nothing but ashes remained. This was the most horrifying of all. It made the Nazi death camps look like a picnic, if that is possible. Millions of people were executed in this way via computer systems automatically with such precision and efficiency that I marveled that something like this was even possible and could take place on such a large scale. The technology was more advanced than I had ever seen. Then... I was looking back at that terrible angel of the Lord, and he said, Warn everyone, flee from the wrath to come. Repent and turn to Jesus while you still can. Pray that you may escape these things that are shortly to happen and to stand in the presence of the Lord. These things are about to take place. Turn to God and cry out for mercy. Come into the ark of salvation before the doors of grace close, and it is too late. 
that's the vision. Well, that's just awesome, brother. That is absolutely just awesome. And for you out there listening, there is no question this is of God. Now we're going to go on to us continuing to discuss this dream, picking it up from yesterday's discussion, Maurice Scalar. So these three rockets you saw were definitely EMP. Yes. Knocking out all of our communications. All right, that makes sense. I to saw me. other nuclear explosions also, but not as clear. I didn't, these, it was like I saw them, and I think it was the beginning of a nuclear attack of some kind. I saw, I knew cities were also targeted, and there were other bombs. But these were what I saw, and then I saw on the earth, I saw all the lights go out. Yes, and well, that's the EMP. I that's saw what... candles being lit. I mean, because not everybody... Not not everybody died in this. That they lost. We lost our power. And I noticed one of the this dream. One of the things that was so alarming of you know the different scenes I saw was no food and water. People were starving. Yeah. These riot police came in to homes. They would either be willing to go off to these camps that they had, or they would just shoot them. They just shot them and left them for dead in their home. Yeah, they they don't take any mercy. And they, but but the thing about it was, they they were they were like this zombie. Like it looked like one of those those science fiction movies where they've been you know there's no they 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 drank the cool well whatever took the mark I think it, there's this there's this mind control thing. They were just these the they were just lockstep. You couldn't you know they, they weren't thinking at all. They were just being controlled. Uh, like a mind control, and they would just shoot people and leave them. Okay, and then you saw these concentration camps. Were they like the barbed wire concentration camps? <clears throat> no, no, not really. They looked more like a '70s junior high school. <laughs> you know, you ever remember? You know, it, they were. They looked like they had already been built. There was there were fences around them, but the people weren't resistant at all they just walked right in and and they were being they were like tents and how i didn't i didn't talk about this in the what i wrote down but uh there were like tent cities kind of thing you know with small tents and and uh but there were people being executed just like in the nazi camps but they had this very sophisticated way of doing it and they seemed to trick people you're going to get a wonderful meal yeah. Come in here, and 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 you know you you will have clothes for you. We have we'll meet your needs. You'll be happy, and and this was also repeated in that kiosk thing. But every time it was the same. It was like a hologram movie that would, but it wasn't a movie. It would actually the leader, you know, the Antichrist would stand. It, it was the same. It was like he was there, but he wasn't there. And it was all done automatically by computer. And, and he would have this speech and say, you know, you're going to be happy and you need to be, you know, with us. And, and then they would just completely be given over to Satan. It's terrible. We had... Uh... Lord wants to say something. Can I... Oh, my people, come out of Babylon. Do not be apart with her, for her sins have come to the fullness, and I will judge her. America has joined with Babylon. Do not be a part with her. Come out from among her, says the Spirit of grace. The time is short. The deception will grow and grow, and people will start to drink of the wine of Babylon and be deceived, and they will be drunken, and the nations will just totter and teeter to and fro. There will be terrible, terrible deception. You will not have the capacity to come back. Oh, come out of her. This is my warning to you, for I have a place prepared for you. Come and follow me, only by me, the Lord, can you be saved. For even the elect, even the elect could be deceived in this last hour. I am shortening the days. Yes, the time is short. I will not, I will not tarry forever. I will not uh, stop to plead with you to come out, come out. And let me wash you in my blood, that you partake, you do not partake with her sins. You do not become a part of this terrible, terrible trap that will cover the earth. 
it's coming, the storm is coming, come out of her, come out of her, come out of her, my people, saith the Lord. Amen, brother. I hope you folks out there can recognize the word of the Lord. Ken Peters made a DVD for us in 2001, I believe it was, might have been 2000, called I Saw the Tribulation. And in this, he tells about how he was standing in line. There would be people in line that were walking up and down the line with um, clipboards in their hands saying, we have food, we have a dry place for you to sleep, we have everything you need, all you have to do is step out of line and deny him. And they would never say the name Jesus. They would say, all you have to do is deny him. And this sounds like what you're talking about here, where they're asking people to deny Christ, right? Yes. The, the, well, that is what anti-Christ would mean, wouldn't it? That's Anti-Messiah. Right. Against, yes, because in the spirit realm, there aren't lots of different ways. There's only, there's only one redemption for man, and that's through Jesus. And, and yes, and these extreme measures of torture, like what I saw was there were some of the people that would not yield even when they were told you know you can eat you can sleep you can get all these wonderful things and then there would be like this i don't know if it was electric or it was some sort but it was a mental torture that was so horrible people would scream and they would torture them and say deny deny uh (coughs) jesus renounce and take the mark and it was all about and it was it was really really uh Hard. Some couldn't survive it. Some, many did, but some just, God rose up in them and, and kept them from it, just like he did in the days of, of you know, Diocletian or uh, the Roman Perseus or the, you know, they would not deny him. Right. And, and then, <clears throat> then I saw, like what I said, I saw this kind of execution, but it wasn't, it was just these red lasers that would shoot out from one side and other side, and then through the heart. And it would just hit them, and it just, the, their brain, it would just fry their brains. And then this, this, that same laser would just go, shh, and their head would just come right off. And then they wow. were incinerated. And all of this happened, like, in five seconds. Wow. And they were gone. They were just gone. There wow. was no body. There was just a pile of ashes. That was it. From what I saw, I mean, again, I... It, this was a dream, okay? Some people say, yeah, you, you ate something funny, you know? No, okay. I don't think so. But this was so vivid and is so startling. Uh, I think it's a warning because I think that there are realms of mind control now that we don't even know. There's technology even now that we don't know about. Yeah. Other. They haven't and shown us all of their it's cards. It's being developed and... Uh, it's in the realm of, uh, some people call it singularity, which is uh, the merging of of computer and with human, you know, we've seen, and, and our society has been prepared for, for this, uh, with all of these movies. I mean, hundreds of these movies that have the same theme of technologies there. The only thing that's holding it back is the prayers of God's people. And he's saying, come out of her. And I don't realize, I don't think people realize how deceived many in the church are. We've drank the Kool-Aid. We don't know it. Go to the movie and we end up thinking like the world, you know? Well, and then the next thing that you got to, that there were millions of hidden groups that escaped the first wave of these terrible disasters, and then revival broke out. And that fits with the Scriptures, too, because Jeremiah 51, verse 50 says, I believe it's there, or right close there, within a verse or two, it says, And yet a little time in her harvest shall come. So after this trouble, as I've been saying for years on the radio, after the trouble, then many people will turn to Christ. And that fits with what the Lord has shown me. I meditated the book of Revelation. I read it through 50 times and prayed in the Spirit three to five years ago, somewhere in there. And it took me several years because I would, wouldn't go on until I, I just like sat before God and said, show me, feed me this book, show me what it is because I don't understand it. What I saw when the Lord began to show me the book of Revelation, it was, it's heaven, earth, heaven, earth, judgment, harvest, judgment, harvest, judgment, harvest. And then, so you see this pattern, and God never stops reaching out, even in the worst of the judgments of the end times. There'll be a judgment, and then there's a wave of grace and harvest that will come. That is the way God has always dealt with us. It's to rescue souls from eternity, you know, in hell. 
on down, you said that once they'd come out of this kiosk where they had taken the mark, they had this zombie-like look on them. Uh, the Bible says that those people that take the mark of the beast, uh, basically they cannot repent from that. That's right. Okay, and that's what, and maybe there, that's the reason because there's something that happens. It's like I said, it looked like a spiritual lobotomy. They had no more free will. They could not come back. And then you also saw police units, these guys wearing blue helmets. Do you think that that was UN? I don't know. They were light blue. Some of them, not all of them. Some just were black, you know. But, but I don't know. Does UN have that? Yes. They have that. Well, they were light blue. They almost looked like the stormtroopers in, in a way, in, in uh, uh, the Star Wars or something, except you could see their faces. But the, the helmets almost looked like World War II helmets. Interesting. It was sort of a... It, it kind of had a, a lip to it, you know. I didn't see UN on it, and some of them just like they looked like they had caps, like just like a base, not a base, but no no brim to it, but just it was like looked like a cap. I mean, or or a beret type thing. Were they speaking they, English? Yeah. Did you ever see the movie um, I Robot? Yes. It was like that. They were in such sync. I mean, they didn't look like that, but <laughs> they it was just. They were like robots. They they didn't seem human. Wow. It was really scary. It, like they were all would turn at the same time. They would move synchronized completely. That suggested maybe farther in the future, maybe, perhaps. Maybe we can't do that now. Well, <coughs> either that or they've got it secreted away someplace and they haven't revealed it to us. But That's I know you definitely are talking about some things we don't know about yet, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. There's a whole lot I don't know. I can only tell you what I've seen and heard. The yeah. whole point of me bringing you on here, this was before I even knew you had this this awesome dream here. I uh, emailed you and I said, now, Maurice, I understand that you, uh, you have been shown that the reason America is split in two is because we force Israel to split Jerusalem. Is that correct? And you emailed back and said, yeah, and I've also had this other dream too. So tell us about that. Tell us that... Uh, about the splitting of, of America and Israel. I'm sure many of your listeners uh, know about the relationship, the covenant relationship that America has with Israel. You have to understand Israel and America are connected because our calling in America is to stand in the end times and help Israel as the Gentile and the Christian nation that would be the friend of Israel. So when we began turning on Israel in about 1991, Others have chronicled, the, as you know, of the disasters that happened in America as they relate to Israel and are dividing the land. In Joel, it says uh, that, that God will judge those that part or divide my land. Joel 3, 2. That's right. So you know all these things before. You have to remember when you're dealing with Israel also, Sister Gwen Shaw said this to me, and when we're dealing with Israel in America, that isn't the new covenant. That's the old covenant, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. So as soon as there's an immediate judgment because you're dealing with the old covenant people, and God has put the nation of Israel in the end times as an anvil and as an immovable stone that the nations will try to divide Jerusalem and a sharp stone, they'll just injure themselves. So it's, it's the indestructible nation, basically. God is standing for her. Whenever a nation says, like Iran, it says, we're going to blow you off, the, we're going to wipe you off the face of the map, that, there's a mirror, and it just, it just bounces right back. That's what will happen to them. Well, so, that brings a question, because I know that a couple of days before 9-11, we turned against Israel. Uh, the day before Katrina, we turned against Israel. The day before the, the Deepwater Horizon, we turned against Israel. So are you saying that if we want to know when the meteor is going to hit, all we have to do is look and see when we split Israel? Well, of course, I didn't see a meteor, so I don't know anything about a meteor. Well said. <laughs> I, <laughs> well, it, it, well this said. other fellow did. <laughs> the other prophet or whatever. Okay, but it, okay, let's put it this way. The splitting of America is associated with the splitting force, of Israel. If we force Israel to divide the city of Jerusalem, God will swiftly divide us. Do you think that would be the next day, the next month, or my, well, is that going to be over seventy? Seventy chronicled. John McTurnan has done that. The relationship of disasters. 
within 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours of something happening in Israel, an equivalent but exponentially greater event mirrors that in America. I remember so clearly, it was in the New York Times, it was two pictures side by side on the front page. One picture had a woman that was a settler in Israel uh, that had lost her home and had been bulldozed, it was just wreckage. She was on top of that on her house, weeping. And then the picture right next to it, on the right, I believe, was a picture of Katrina and just devastation and houses, wreckage, and a woman sitting on top of her house. Wow. It was right there in the paper, you know, on the front page, full color picture. It couldn't have been clearer if God had shouted it out. I mean, that, the relationship, see, because they forced all the Jewish settlers out of Gaza and bulldozed their homes and just wrecked them the very next day. Now, you know, Kerry is working, trying to come up with this Palestinian state agreement by April 29th, which mm-hmm. is very near one of the blood moons, okay? Oh, yeah. uh, it's, yeah, it's coming at, at, at right the week before, I think. It, it's over in Passover. It's exactly in Passover. Right, right. I mean, this is, you know, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's say they come up with an agreement. And let's assume that the splitting of America is associated with us splitting Israel, as you and I believe. Do you think that America would be split with the agreement when they begin to move the Jews out or when the final Jew leaves for the Palestinian state? Do you have any opinion on that? The question is, is it going to be with the paperwork, the actual beginning to move the Jews, or when the final Jews leave? I don't know, brother. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I don't know, but I do know, you know, don't mess with them. Don't, <laughs> yeah, do, don't do that. That's, that's stupid. True. That's you true. Know? I will bless them that bless you and curse them that right, curse you. Right. Right? I mean, you know, whether it's the paper or it's the event, that's really dumb. But you see, people are so drunk on this wine of Babylon and of idolatry. They, the leaders, they don't see it. They're completely zombied out. So... They'll just keep going. But what's going to happen in the earth? This is important, Stan. What's going to happen with these judgments is it'll get to the place where, if you read the book, Prophet Ezekiel, you'll see over and over, and they shall know that I am the Lord by the judgments of God. See, they're trying now, they, they had a whole religious service at the, at the Congress, you know, uh, about global, war- global climate warming or change. I mean, they're, they're like, oh, that's why all this is happening. You know, the, we, we've got to do something with the, the earth. And, you know, and they still haven't understood that I am the Lord. And the more severe the judgments are, finally they'll have to say, the Lord, he is God. You know, he's doing, this is God. This is God. He's almighty God. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Look at that in the book of Ezekiel. Uh, he says that over and over and over and over and over. And it's almost always after a judgment. And because, you see, it's to wake up people. I am the one true God. How can I possibly begin to tell you what you really need to know about the last days? We have so many DVDs at the Prophecy Club, but this particular DVD is a must-have. It's called Revelations for the Midnight Hour by Maurice Scalar. And he covers 10 visions. These aren't just dreams, brothers and sisters. These are visions. And the 10 visions are the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the six Babylons, the vision of the mantle of Elijah, the vision of the 10 lamps, the vision of the Victorian mansion, the vision of the wedding supper, the closing of the gates, three wars of Israel, preparation of the bride, and the vision of heaven. All 10 of them, one DVD, valued at $30. We're making it available today for a gift of just $15. Call 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. 785-266-1112, Visions for the Midnight Hour by Maurice Scalar. 